what is going on everybody <clears throat> welcome back to another video on institutional concepts so this week we actually uh, had a few good setups USD CAD being one of them US oil being another um, we were actually at a daily key level on the dollar and this was a good indication to show us where the XY was actually going which was to the upside so I'll get into a quick dollar review with you guys on why we expected some type of price action and big move or um, some type of reaction at this key level. <clears throat> so our key level actually comes in at this last bearish candle here for this major up move. It's known as our institutional stamp and price. Um, it's a price block. So in this example, this last down candle before this major up move, is your price block and it has a very important uh, stamp on price so at these price levels you'll start to see uh, some type of rejection or reaction at this level and this is exactly what we will happen we actually had to sit in our hands for a little while um, to see actually how the dollar was going to react up here and we've got a nice bullish rejection so it's actually our second target so our first target was actually this marking balance here which it closed out um and then continue down to the actual price block here so being at this key level on the dollar we could have used the other pairs to see a, a way to navigate through price and see a way to navigate through the waters on what the dollar is actually doing so we have a usd based pair here in the usd tab and then we're going down to the one hour time frame so I've gone over before in one of my videos the false break uh, of the low. And here we actually have the same exact thing with us. A, a topic I haven't gotten into with you guys, which is S&T divergence. Um, it's not the same divergence everybody else usually uses with an RSI or an indicator. It actually doesn't need an indicator. This is just a visual um, concept that you guys can use on these type of pairs and all four pairs as well. This happens across the board. So we have a low set here and we have price reject off this low and trade up and then we have a retracement back down to this low. So with the dollar being at this key level here, it was, it was, this was a big indication on the dollar going bullish. So we have a low set here and the retail traders and uninformed traders, uh, this seems like a significant low for them in price. It's actually the lowest low before we had the retracement. and so there's people out there who put sell limits and sell stops and pending orders underneath this low here to catch the breakout of this low so that's a form of liquidity right there in order for the market to go up they have to have willing sell participants in order for the market to go down they have to have active buy participants so the run on this low here was basically an activation of those pending orders and anybody whose stop losses were actually in at this low or below the low still. So we had this move here up and there's people who had their stop losses under here or at the low as well. So that's two forms of liquidity that they have grabbed right there coming back to this low. So they actually trade under the low here and activate those pending orders and made a lower low. So you have a low here and then you have a lower low made here. So what is SMT divergence? Well, it's when two pairs that normally um, either correlate positively or negatively together, um, do something completely opposite, which will usually give away the hand um, that is being dealt. So under this flow here, as I said, is a pocket of liquidity, a sell side liquidity. And what they did was they actually raided into that and grabbed all those contracts and anybody who stopped, uh, stop loss was at break even or at this flow of, of this move. And we call this the false break low, false break of the low turtle soup. So basically they cleared out this low and closed right back in to this low, uh, the low that they broke out of. This is just a run on liquidity. Now something to make it even sweeter and spicier for you to actually get into this and another confirmation to where you can actually get into another trade as well is we know that USD CAD is US dollar versus Canadian dollar. So a lot of people don't know that 
the Canadian dollar influences the price of oil a lot as well. So if we go over to US oil, now look at the time frames that I have between these two black lines here of these time lines, June 8th and June 10th. Look at this type of price action here. We have a lower low being made. So I have a low and then a lower low being made. If we go over to oil, at the same time you have a high and then you have a lower high being made here. This is where the S&P divergence comes into play. So you have a failed swing high. So you have a high set here and then a lower high at the same time that USD CAD made a lower low here. So in symmetrical market prices, if USD CAD made a lower low, US oil should have made a higher high. A lot of people don't know that these two pairs literally do almost the opposite of each other um, because CAD heavily influences the price on oil. So at the same time that this high was set here and then the lower high in between this price action, which is June 8th and June 10th, we have USD CAD basically running under and creating a lower low. That lower low is just a, um, an example of them taking the sell side liquidity and oil gave it away. So coming in with a dollar being at that daily um, price block that we knew should have some type of significant price reaction, whether they were going to take the low of it or whether they were going to give us a nice little rejection, which is what they did. Uh, this is a way you can navigate through the waters. So with USD CAD making that lower low and creating a turtle soup scenario, excuse me, turtle soup scenario, this is being a USD based pair. This would have gave away the hand on USD CAD. Um, this would give you a nice trade you could have taken off oil. This would have also helped you unlock the price action on EU and GU. And this is how we use cross pairs and other USB based pairs to determine uh, what type of reaction we're going to get off levels. So USD CAD actually had a nice move upwards to from this low that it actually broke, it went up about 310 pips to its max. So I've given you this setup now. How do you how do you determine your your stop loss or determine your take profit. Well, technically, in what I've learned and, and have used in these turtle soup scenarios is if I get in after this break here, my stop loss will usually go at the very low of the wick just to be safe. Because once it's turtle soup scenario, they've trapped so much liquidity down here that they're not going to come back down. The, the example I like to use is if you're standing on the street with your wallet in your hand and someone runs and grabs your wallet out of your hand and runs away, are they gonna turn back around and run towards you to give you a chance of getting your wallet back? No, they're not going to. So in this example is they took this low here and grabbed out liquidity and basically caught people for the wrong way, people selling under here. They're not gonna come back down to give them a chance to get out in terms of scenario. They're just gonna run with the money. They grab the liquidity that they need to so that's where the the phrase I say comes into that in order for them to buy this market, they need willing selling participants to take the other side of the contract. And if you're going to sell the market, they need willing buy participants to sell to um, or to buy to in that example. So where would your target be? Well, if you caught this low, if you've seen any of the other videos, I talk about market imbalances. So the market imbalance is basically when price was delivered on one side only. So from this price point here to this price point here, in between this, these two wicks was an injection of only sell side liquidity. So between these two points here was sell side um, liquidity only. So you'd have a major down move. Um, you know, this, the algorithm that the market actually moves off of will remember these points and knows that these need to be filled in. So the market likes to be um, delivered efficiently and fairly. So in order for this to be delivered efficiently, they have to come back up and put buy candles into this or so wick into this in order to inject buy side liquidity. Now with this, this turtle soup scenario being um, taking place, 
this could have been your major target. This would this would have been your major target. Would be so I usually aim for 50%. How do you get the 50%? Well, the same way you get the 50% of your price block is the same way you get the 50%. So you take from the wick of each of the candle that actually created the imbalance and you put a trend line here at the 50%. And that is called your consequential encroachment for your CD trade. And this is a, a major target that you'll look for to get to get taken, um, which is exactly what happened in this scenario. So they came down, created the turtle, turtle soup scenario, and price started trading away. And it's not a coincidence that that's exactly where it put the brakes on, was at the 50%. This was the algo basically injecting some uh, buy side liquidity into this sell side imbalance. And it was on a Friday as well. so. I wouldn't have expected much, much higher prices on a Friday's um, price action. So that was just a quick video on USD CAD and US oil on how you could have actually um, used these two to determine the uh, outlook on the dollar. And these are two bridge setups you could have taken. Once you've seen that you had made that um, false break to the low here, you could have sold short on oil. Um, and caught a decent amount of pips. So even if you got it at the closure of this red candle, um, that's still 469 pips plus 469 pips plus another 300 or so on on UCAT. So that's about 700 pips between two pairs that you could have used to determine the outlook on each of them. You could have used those to uh, cross-examine uh, the pairs. So I hope this this video helped you guys out a little bit in uh, price action on USD CAD and how you can use the CAD oil together to form a pretty solid bias on um, the charts. So I appreciate everybody who watched this. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and comment. Um, give me some more pairs you'd like to go over. Give me some some concepts you'd like to understand. Or if there's any questions you have, just go ahead and, and comment on them, and I'll get back to you guys. So everybody have a wonderful night and enjoy. <laughs>